TimeWar.com. We are at WWDC 2012, and I am talking to David Barnard of AppCubby. How are you, David? Good, good. Now, first, I want to give you huge kudos. You wrote quite a bit about Retina Max, and it looks like that was very prescient. I did, uh, and just to just to clear the air, I didn't have any inside information on that. But you know, uh, panel technology is it's expensive. They're hard to manufacture. They have a lot of uh, defects, and and so getting production up on uh, that level of a panel uh, is expensive and it's hard. And uh, so you know, I mean, I hoped that Apple could have you know done everything at once. You yeah. know, the 27 inch iMac, the 27 inch cinema display. The, uh, the MacBook Airs, and, and you know, I'm sure they're all in the works, and I'm sure at Apple there are retina screens, but you know, it's hard, and, and Apple's supply chain and, and their target for growth margins and their target for battery life, you know, they have a lot of constraints that they work really hard to work within, and uh, you know, it, just, it just seemed to not make sense that they'd be able to do all that at yeah. once. And so you know, in thinking about that, it just made sense. You know, a pro machine for developers now, and then keep iterating away and get the rest of them out in, you know, the next six months to a year. So it just made a lot of sense. No inside information, but... No, you, yeah. did, the lo you did the logic. I did the logic. So I've been following Apple long enough to kind of... <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody's got their, like, unicorns and rainbows that they talk about, and all the rumor sites have, you know, a million different things that may or may not happen. But, you know, if you've been following Apple long enough, you see their iterative yeah. approach, and, and you understand that they're going to, you know, keep pushing. And, um, you know, and something we were talking about yesterday, how... You know, uh, Counter Notions had a really good post about how, you know, Apple's hardware dilemma. They, when they build an iPhone, they know they're going to sell 100 million yeah. of those devices. You know, the, the iPhone 5 that's coming out in the fall, presumably. <laughs> Again, if you're paying attention to Apple, you know an iPhone is coming out in the fall. That's not any secret inside information. Yeah. But um, so, so they know that this device is going to sell 100 million. It's not going to sell 100 million the first year, but they're probably going to have it three years yeah. like they had the 3GS for three years. And so... You know, when you know something's going to be manufactured 100 million times, you kind of got to get it right. Yes. And so, you know, Counter Nose has had a, a great post. I recommend going to read that, anybody who hasn't, about about that dilemma of being able to execute on hardware at that level. Um, and, and again, not just even, like, building hardware, but understanding the supply chain to, to make that happen, to to build 100 million devices. And, and so even the Macs are selling in such high volume now that they know they got to get the supply chain right. They know they have to get the industrial design right. They know they have to get the battery life right. And, and that's hard stuff. You know, uh, competitors haven't even caught up to the MacBook Air. No. I mean, there's nothing that even really gets close yet to the MacBook Air. And they just, you know, kick the ball you know, 100 yards downfield, and everybody's still playing catch-up, so... Yeah, you, you kind of think the VP at Dell and HP are just crying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, you know, and, and as we move more and more to the post-PC world, you know, what are people using to to develop these post-PC apps? They're using Macs. Yeah. So Apple has kind of a little built-in racket there <laughs> that, that, you know, they're... Their, even their Mac platform is going to be a more important moving forward yes. than even some of the, the other uh, pre-post PC <laughs> devices. <laughs> I don't know all the terminology there, but so. so switching gears to iOS six, uh, you were at the keynote. You saw what they released. Was there anything in there that I mean, we didn't get contracts, we didn't get intents. Mm -hmm. uh, you do a lot of work with uh, URL strings. Mm -hmm. Overall, what was your impression of iOS six? You know, I mean, again, same with the hardware. Apple, Apple's a very disciplined company, and they, they you know, we all get excited about all the, the unicorns and rainbows that, that could happen, but Apple takes a disciplined approach. And, and iOS 6, you know, there were some things I really wanted. Like, uh, you know, to me, Notification Center, once you have, you know, a few apps sending you push notifications, it gets pretty hairy. Yeah. And so I was hoping they would do something to kind of alleviate that. you got but, a tweet button. you got a Facebook button. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, and, and yeah, I I went back and forth. I really didn't think we'd see widgets because that would turn notification center into something it's really not. Yeah. And as soon as you know you get five widgets in notification center, as bad as it is already. Um, so so my hope though is if they r completely rethought notification center, then they could implement something like that in a way that made sense. Um, but you know that's not Apple. Yes. You know, they just released Notification Center, I guess, in 4.0 last year. And so, 5 yeah. Or was it, was it 5.0? Yeah. Gosh, so we've only had it, like, yeah. six months. They're not going to redo it from the ground up. <laughs> so, you know, so that's probably iOS 8, you yeah. know, and, and that's, that's Apple. You know, they're going to keep iterating. But overall, you know, 
I think a lot of people watching, you know, who who look at iOS six and think, oh, app, you know, Apple's slowing down or Apple's, you know, missed all these rainbows and unicorns. You know, they're not they're not paying attention to what Apple does. So, you know, Apple is building a platform, and you know, even talking to some you know Apple engineers I know, you know, they're they're digging deep, they're going back, they're fixing things, they're 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 maintaining the foundation of their platform. You said it yesterday. They've been doing this for a long time. Yeah, they've been doing this for thirty years. They know or more. They they know how to they know how to build and maintain a platform, and that is really really hard work. And so, you know, I mean, as much as I pick on Google, I'll, I'll do it once again. You know, I mean, there's a lot of really smart people there, and they're doing some cool stuff. I mean, there's interesting things happening on Android. I'll give them all that, but but there's they don't have the kind of team and the kind of history in building and managing a platform that Apple does. And so, you know, they've been throwing a lot of features out there, like user-facing features and even throwing a bunch of APIs at developers and stuff. Um, but you don't have the, the user adoption, um, you know, things break, you know. Uh, they, they, they're, not, they're not taking as, a dis as disciplined an approach and as thoughtful approach to building and managing their platform as Apple is. And so they can throw stuff against the wall and, and see if it sticks, and they can throw APIs out there that aren't fully baked. But, you know, as a developer, when I look at those things, you know, I don't want my app to break every time they release a new yeah. update. And on Android, that happens. And on iOS, it doesn't. You know, Apple takes great pains to to make upgrading your uh, OS not a, a bad user experience. Yeah. So if you upgrade to iOS 6 and all your apps break, that's a terrible user yes. experience. So Apple knows that. And it's and bad so, for you as a developer because you have to field all those complaints. Exactly. And so Apple does an amazing job going back and testing old apps and making sure that all of their, even as they're working under the hood to modernize some of the APIs and add new features to them, they make sure, and it's incredibly hard work, but they make sure that they're backward compatible and that the apps that are in the store and shipping and that people like they're going to keep working and you know and so they think about things and do those things and so with iOS 6 you know we got some really cool stuff but we didn't get all the rainbows and unicorns yes. but but if you expected that you know you were reading the wrong sites exactly <laughs> exactly yeah <laughs> exactly yeah you hit a lot of the things you know you hit the nail on the head a lot and i, I think you know we're at a point you know with now six six iterations into the OS that that those of us who are paying attention can see how they approach things and how you know, we're going to get some really cool new stuff each time, but they're not just going to, like, throw out the kitchen sink and, like, rebuild the whole thing from scratch. Like, and, and Now it's holographic. Yeah. <laughs> and even things like a Siri API. I mean, I was hopeful for that. You know, I think it would be really cool. But, again, when you look at, at, at what a challenge it is to enable developers to hook into such a deep, complex system, yeah. you can't one doesn't just walk into <laughs> a Siri API. <laughs> and so, and so, you know, again, they're taking a disciplined approach to this. They're, you know, I would imagine we might not even see it in iOS 7. Well, you they'd know, have it, to deal with collisions. They'd have to deal oh, with all sorts. I mean, there's a lot. It's non-trivial. It is an incredibly complex thing to, to put semantics in the hands of hundreds of thousands of developers and, and try and make sure they do the right thing. Yeah. Um, and, and Siri itself, I mean, you know, I, if you follow me on Twitter, you, you do. Yeah. Uh, you know, I've, I've, I've been known to complain about <laughs> it here and there. And, you know, so, so they're still very much in beta with it themselves. And so to kind of open that up to developers probably would have been more of a mess than it would they... Have been, it would have been a sign that they're being reactionary instead of being... Right, this. exactly. But, but you know, uh, somebody was posting yesterday or today about how Siri... As much as Maps was a kick to the pants of yeah. Google, Siri is maybe even more so because, you know, last year during football season, I'm a bit of a football fan, not a huge, but, you know, I like a Sunday afternoon sitting on the couch. So, you know, if I'm looking for a schedule, where do I do? I go to Google. Now I don't. I go to Siri. And so they're going to hone in more and more and more. Yeah, they're intermediating all of Google searches. Contexts. Yeah. And so it's, you know, it's a big deal. And there's so, so there's a lot of big things happening but it's just not quite as like unicorn and rainbow as everybody <laughs> worked it up to be. And so this is Rene Ritchie from iMore.com. We're at uh, WWDC 2012. David Barnard from AppCubby. And for more videos, check out youtube.com slash iMoreVideo.